So hi from my side as well. My name is Sebastian Daschner. I'm from Germany, from Munich. I'm a freelancer working with Java. And today I want to um, talk about uh, putting hypermedia back in REST with JuxRS. So who of you has been working with REST or was or what was considered to be REST? Hands up. Nobody? Who has heard of REST? Come on, there must be some people. Ito-san, you have heard of REST, right? <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> Yeah, a little. A few. Okay, that's that's what I expected. Okay, who has heard of JuxRS? Also, probably a few people. So JuxRS is uh, the standard in the Java E umbrella to implement REST services. And today I want to talk about a uh, little bit about REST and about JuxRS. So um, I want to talk about what REST APIs or what was considered to, to be REST APIs in reward projects look like or could look like. So maybe you have seen something like this. This is an HTTP example. It shows an API with some action, like do something, do some action, make something. And you're posting um, some request body to that URL to actually perform an action. And then you get some response back uh, with some inbound and outbound parameters. Maybe you have seen something like this. And this is, in fact, somewhat like HTTP remote procedure call. So this is probably not what you would consider as REST as resources rather than you're just calling an, an action uh, over HTTP, right? So it doesn't matter if it's do something or if you're even getting, you're even retrieving some information, but using post here, not using get, right? And this is probably what you have seen or what uh, some real world uh, projects may look like, but probably not what REST is consider uh, considered to be. So REST is, for example, it's about resources. Like the resources in your API should, in fact, reflect your business object, what you have in, uh, in your application. So for example, uh, this one, like you have a user man management API, for example, and you have a list of users there. So you're getting, in this case, not posting, a list of users. And as a response, here in XML, it could also be JSON, you get a list of users back like this Duke with an ID and a name and a motto and a list of users, there could be others. And this is in fact somewhat more RESTful because you're using resources here. You're, you're talking about objects, not about actions, right? And this means you're using semantic HTTP, what HTTP was meant to be, because you are reading some information and therefore you use get the HTTP method, not post, right? Because if you look at the HTTP spec, that's what it's meant to be. And you're also um, using the resources as objects and not, not verbs. And this is another example how to perform an action. Like you want to create a user in that user management, right? So you're not uh, calling create some user rather than you're posting a user, which was in the request body there to the user's response, resource, to the list of users, to create a new user. So you have a name, a motto in your XML data, you're posting it, and as a response, it's not always like HTTP status code 200 OK, rather than you have different status codes. Like in this uh, example, 201 created is a much better match here, as it says that the server, in fact, created a new resource, what well, it was the case. And the location there tells you where to find that resource. And this is also another good uh, example how to get back um, the control of your URLs. Because for the first example here, the user has an ID. And if you have a list of users and you want to get one specific user, for example, that Duke here, you probably have to imply how the URLs look like, right? You have users slash one, two, three, four, five and you're kind of implying that the URLs look like this. So you get to the URL users, and then you're taking the ID from the response. You put a user slash P 
plus that ID and the client shouldn't do this because the client should not make any assumptions about the URL or how they are constructed. And in this example, the server tells where, where to find the new resource, right? And this is exactly the point where hypermedia kicks in. Because in hypermedia, you're kind of linking related resources to each other. So that, that the server responds with links in their resource and you can, uh, you can follow these links. Like this example. That's the users list again. But now you don't have the ID, rather than you have a link with a self-relation. And the self-relation tells um, the client where to, uh, that this link here, user slash one two three four five, is the self, the user itself, that object you have in that list. And then to follow that user, that specific user, you just have to follow that link, and you're not making any assumptions about the IDs and the URLs and so on and so forth. So this is a very a good example where hypermedia helps you in your API. Another example is about business logic. For instance, um, this is an example for a bookstore API. So think of Amazon or something, like um, you can buy books. And this is, in, the, in that case, JSON, but it doesn't matter. And in th for this example, you have a name for your book. Maybe you may have an ISBN, an author, an availability, a price, mm. and something else. And also some links here, so with the self link again. Just the same, just like as before. But now you also have some add to cart link. So we, when you actually want to buy that book, how to, add, uh, how to add it to your cart. And now you can say, okay, I want to display an add to cart button in my client, but only if the availability equals available something, if the book is available or the user has some credit on his account and so on and so forth. So now you should not make on your client side if availability equals something, because that is kind of duplicated logic, right? Because the server should know about it, and now the client also has to know about when to display that button. Rather than you just return that link from the server only if it's really supposed to be added to the shopping cart. And this means now the client only knows about that add to cart relation to that string here, and knows if that if and only if that relation is included in the list of links, then I may add the shopping button, right? So now the client doesn't know about that business logic. And this is another example where REST helps you to el uh, eliminate duplicate functionality. And now a more uh, complex example, because if you ask yourself, okay, and now I know the URL to the add to cart functionality, but I don't know how to use it, right? because it's probably not a simple get call rather than you want to post something there. And now you know, uh, you want to know what to post, right? What content type do I uh, need to use? How does the JSON or XML have to look like, right? And this can be also um, included in your API using a more complex approach, like this one. Um, this is a content type called Siren. I will explain a few of them in a minute. And this is supposed to be part of that books resource again. So you have book with the name, ISBN, availability, and so on and so forth, and some links, and now some actions. So now you have that add to cart action, which specifies an HTTP method, post in this case, and the URL, like we had before, plus also a content type and what information the server needs for that book to be added to the, to the shopping cart. So now the client is somewhat independent because the server can each time actually modify that data if it wants to and the client will adapt to it because now the client doesn't have too much implicit logic about it. Rather, it only needs to know, okay, I know that add to cart relation, what that is, the add to cart functionality, and I need to know where the fields come from the ID and the quantity. For example, you want to add one specific book with an ID or an ISBN and five of them, quantity equals five. And now the quantity could be a drop-down box and the ID con could come from somewhere else, maybe from the response. And then you could simply add that book to the server using solely that logic and the client does not have to know any implicit logic before.
and that is also where you gain a lot of um, a lot of yeah control to the server side again because now the client doesn't has to have to uh, know that up front so any questions so far C feel free to ask questions anytime Okay, so now you hopefully get uh, the uh, the idea about hypermedia and what's it about and where it can help you, actually. And here I got a list of somewhat hypermedia formats. So most of them are just JSON or XML plus something else. So this was all valid JSON, but in a specific structure that it says, okay, like HTML is, um, that you have some predefined actions, links, and so on and so forth. And there are several of them. Unfortunately, none of them has one so far to be the one and only standard. These are all kind of approaches to be standardized and all have their kind of pros and cons. Some, some of them are simpler, which only allows the simple links with the get calls. Some of them, like Siren, this was the example I showed before, allow more, um, more uh, control because you also have these actions with the post and the fields and so on and so forth. Collections and JSON is also a uh, very example, a uh, very interesting way you can um, define some queries. And JSON schema also allows you to to add some schema to describe your business objects and so on and so forth. So maybe you can, you want to have a look at these. So and now if you don't have any questions to hypermedia in general, then let's implement something, right? So the talk is about um, putting hypermedia back in JaxRS, so therefore we will use Java E technology. This is my command line, and now we will um, create a simple Maven project. This is um, just a helper to um, create a default Java E7 project. This is a Maven archetype, and it will create that project for us in no time, because Maven is really fast. And now we will start up in IntelliJ and open that just created project for us. Any questions so far? Who of you has been using Maven before? Uh, one at least. Yeah, a little bit more. That's what I expected. Very good. So um, let's increase the font size a little bit. This is the POM file of that. As you can see, it's basically empty because it only co um, contains the Java E7 API, which is provided, which means it will not end up in your WAR file rather than your WAR file is just basically empty as it will get deployed to Java E7 application server. And the application server itself has the API. So your WAR file only contains your JaxRS and your business logic. And as I said, this project is also basically empty. It contains uh, the JaxRS um, activation, but this is not that interesting. So we now we will write the interesting part, a books resource. This will be our book example, our JaxRS resource, right? So we will add the add path annotation to enable it as a root JaxRS resource with books. Because we want to have the uh, list of books and then I want to show you how to include these links and how to create these links. And now we will include some JaxRS methods, right? So let's start with the list of all books, like the books slash URL, right? So we have the list of some books get books and the list uh, the book itself will be a pojo there and the pojo will include an id um, a name an author and let's say a price uh, by the way don't do money calculations with floating point numbers this is just an example Right? Don't do never do this in production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Bigger font, Ca can't you read it at the back? You sure? You need, you need better glasses. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let's include some getters and setters and just for convenience, a custom constructor. And let's resort these in the correct order. Sorry? The long ID? No, 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 no. Long, long. long book? No? Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and now we got the list of books. And as we are in a Java E uh, project, that will probably come from an EJB, right? So we will inject an EJB like bookstore and now the bookstore will give us the books, right? So this will be a stateless session bean and it will return a list of books. Yep, list and we'll just use the newly created POJO. This is just a simple example. I would just have to hack something <coughs> up front. <coughs> Sorry. So we can start the interesting stuff in a minute. So this will just um, create two books about Java and Hello World. Very simple. And then another resource for one book because later on we will have another Juxres um, method returning only one book. And this is just like dummy data here. It doesn't really matter. In real world, this will probably come from the database um, or somewhere else. But for now, it doesn't matter because the interesting stuff is on the Juxres side. All right. So now we have the EJB, which will give us the list of books, right? And as we're using Java E7 with probably Java 8, let's make use of cool Lambda and stream features, like stream for each. And now in the Juxares resource, we will create the links to each book. Because if you think of the presentation again, we will do something like this. We will create the list of books in this case, not users, but with the URL to each book, right? Now I want to show you how that uh, can be possible. So this example for um, oops, for the book here, this is pretty boring because now it uh, doesn't contain any URLs here. So we want to um, add the links, right? So here we will add some map from string to URI which contains all the links and the string will be the relation and the URI will be the link itself and of course we need some getters and setters as well for the link map and now we can get the links and add something here like add the self URI and hold on where does the URI come from well now we have to create it which will look like books slash one two three four five with the ID used, but we also uh, we already have books up there, so we don't want to um, repeat ourselves all all over again. Which means we'll we use some cool Juxares functionality, and there is some context managed object in Juxares using URI info uh, called URI info, and this functionality can in fact help us to create URIs programmatically based on the JAXRS information which is already there. Which means we can say URI info dot get base URI builder and now we can say give us the path from that JAXRS resource here. Which means it accepts a class which should be a, um, a root JAXRS class and now this will give us the part of the URL here, 
books using reflection, reading that information out of the annotation. And now we can specify another one, books resource class with a method name, get book, which we still have to create. So we will have another sub resource with the ID as a path parameter right because now we want to have user slash and then the id and depending on the book id it, it should uh, change so this will come from so-called path parameter and be injected into that method we will implement that in a minute minute that doesn't matter because for now we need that information get book and this will give us this path parameter as well so it will construct books slash the id but now we don't want to have curly bracket ID, curly bracket, rather than we want to have the real ID. So we need to substitute that, which can be made when the URI is getting built because it accepts some um, parameters. And now we will give as an argument the ID coming from the book. And now this will automatically be substituted here and our URI will look like books slash 1v45 in this case. So this, in fact, is the self URI constructed there, created from that JuxRS functionality on the fly without needing to repeat the URIs all over again. And this will be added to the links um, of each book there. And now we finally return the books. And that's it. And for this example, it's pretty much the same but we only get one book using the ID. And now then we, as this is pretty much the same as before, of course we'll copy paste everything. And now we will create the same thing but only for one book. And now this book will be returned here as well. So we get one book and then to, uh, you write to that book using that ID will be created as well and then return from the JuxRS resource. Questions so far? Everything crystal clear? Oh, all right. For this example, um, we will produce JSON, because it's cool, um, using the media type application JSON with the add producers annotation. This will tell the JuxRS implementation that JSON will be used. And as we are returning the POJO directly, even if it's um, JSON, we can tell the JSON implementation um, some modifications using JAXB annotations. Although JAXB is meant to be used for XML, but all of the JSON implementations take care of that. So we say XML element, because we want to rename that, as, it's, uh, add it is a meter, as it is a meter uh, information, using the underscore links. And maybe we want don't want to include the ID in our JSON, so we use XML transient, and we say XML root element and Exodus type, because we add the annotations to the fields. And now this will work even if it's JSON and uh, JXB annotations. Questions so far? So now we will run it and hopefully it works. So as we're using a Maven uh, project, we will use Maven clean install to build the whole project. And as Maven and Java E is very fast, so even faster than I could talk, this project is compiled and built. And the cool thing about Java E is if you look at that WAR file, it's basically empty, containing only our business logic and JuxRS logic. So there's no external dependencies needed, everything we need, um, the application server already knows. We are just programming against some API and our WAR file is basically empty. And in total it is like 6K in size. This is nothing. All right, um, so we will run the whole thing on Wildfly. It's a Java E7 application server and it's already, yeah, it's done. And now we will fire up a REST client of our choice. I want to use Postman, but then everyone complains about the font size, so let's do something else. 
we can use um, actually we uh, use HTTP so it doesn't matter whatever REST client you want to use we can even use the command line so let's do that using curl cool Unix features and this runs on the local host um, 8080 the application name is JuxRS Hypermedia resources uh, this was the um, JuxRS activator there and now books of course and this will create JSON. It's not really readable. Let's do some command line magic there. Now we got some pretty printed JSON. And now, as you can see, this is the list of all books we just uh, created there with a link, which was created on the fly using JuxRS technology with the correct ID at the end and all the information contained there. And of course, we can also query oops, one uh, specific book, and now this will include the one book there. Questions so far? And as you can see, if you want if the one book to create uh, to contain more information, like the add to cart link, then it's very simple to use some different information there in that method to say, okay, put now the add to cart relation as well, but only if some business logic applies, like the book is available and so on and so forth. So now you see the client at the server can control the logic and the URLs in this case. Questions so far? Okay, this was the um, somewhat simpler example using the POJOS to um, create a response. But what if you have a somewhat more complex example like this one with the siren content type, for example, because now you don't want to create huge POJOs, right? Because otherwise, if you want to have a lot of actions, then you would to have sub, um, sub objects nested in your uh, POJOs and you get huge objects and you don't want that because it's really cumbersome to um, include them. So now, as we're using Java E7, there is another cool functionality using uh, called JSONP, JSON API for uh, JSON pro uh, Java API for JSON processing, which allows you to programmatically create JSON objects. So you don't need to define POJOs up front, rather than you can really programmatically tell what you need your response to look like. So let's delete everything again from here and now we will rewrite that from scratch we will now have the um, it's the same example using just a different functionality there so now we have something called JSON array coming from Java X .json. this is the JSON P API which is in fact a JSON array right for the get books resource and now it's the same story as before. We will use the EJB to query for um, the books. And of course, we will use fancy Java 8 lambdas and streams again. So now we will map each book to a JSON object, to a JSONP object, right? So we will have the same thing again. And now we can call json.createObjectBuilder which is in fact a builder pattern-like API to create JSON objects, right? Saying, please give me a JSON object with some properties, namely a name, which comes from book, get name, of course, and an author coming from this one, and maybe a price, and of course the links again coming, of course, not from uh, the links, rather than you need a nested JSON object, right? Because it's all created using the JSONP API. So now we will have a links object, a nested object, which is a JSON object. We could also use that uh, in internally, but now that uh, then it would be kind of readable. Um, with the link with the self relation coming from the self uh, URI again 
This will be the same functionality uh, as before, which means we have a URI here created from the URI info again, right? From the books resource class and the books resource get book method. Just as before, and built again with the ID, of course. Right? And now um, JSONP doesn't support URIs directly rather than just string and um, primitive objects, so you would have to call dot to string to be a, a string in that case. And now with dot build, you build the JSON object, and now you can include it there with the underscore links property. And now you created that JSON object, if you call dot build, and in your mapping lambda, you return it, which means you created a, a JSON ob uh, object out of that book. And now you have a lot of JSON objects. At the end, you will uh, collect them together to a JSON array. And just because we can, we'll use fancy Java 8 method handles, colon, colon, create array builder, JSON array builder colon colon at JSON array builder colon colon at now we got a JSON array builder out of that and dot build will give us a JSON array here questions so what did we do here just as before we called the EJB to, gis, uh, to give us the list of books and then we mapped the list of books to a um, to a stream and then to a stream of JSON objects, right? Using that functionality here and the JSONP API. And at the end, we collected all of them into a JSON array. And that's it. And the same thing we will do again for the resource of one book using the ID path parameter again. And now this time it is just only one JSON object, right? And it will be called get book again with the path parameter out of the ID and call of course the EJB again with the correct method returning a book and of course we will copy paste program don't do that in production um, normally you would create a, <laughs> <laughs> a separate um, component right like a, a separate um, CDI managed bean or something else which contains the logic how to create your entities using JSONP, for example. So um, for this example, we have the books in this case. So everything is just as before. And this time, we will create another um, URI with um, the add to cart example I just showed before. So now we will have the um, resource from a card resource class, which is not there yet, so we will create it. But this is really boring, so we won't implement it. We will only specify the path to a shopping cart resource, just we had in the slides. And this can basically be empty here. It doesn't matter for the example. We just need the annotation so the JAXRS can create the link, right? And this gets built into a URI. And this will be the shopping cart URI. And this will also be added to the link object there. So we will have add self. And maybe then only if some business logic applies, add to cart with the shopping cart URI. Dot to string again. Right? And now we will create the JSON object programmatically again out of the book information and this will be returned in your JAXRS resource and that's basically it and now you you created a JSON response from a programmatic approach questions so far no questions please ask questions you get stickers don't forget remember you get a nice presence if you ask challenging questions or easy questions, or easy questions. All right, so let's run that example again using Maven Clean Install. 
Oh, I did a tremendous mistake. I forgot some semicolon. IntelliJ, please tell me here. Thanks. Yeah, as you see, this is live, live coding, so everything can happen. So now it works. Build success. And again, it's very fast. It builds our second example here. We will run that again on Wildfly. And of course, we will use the command line again. Now it's started to query that data using the books uh, resource, just as before. And this is the same example here, but this time created by JSONP. And now the you can see the difference if we um, query just only one book, because now at the second example, we have the add to cart link there, which is also created using JSONP. Questions so far? Okay, now I will show you another cool uh, feature of JuxRS. This is why I use the URI info dot get base URI builder there. And the reason why I did that is if, for example, you use a different um, a different host name or na domain name here. So for example, I remapped this local domain using my local host file there. And the cool thing is now JuxRS knows that and includes this this in the link because that functionality will use the current client request to gather that information and build the URI based on that information. Which means if you have an enterprise application with a proxy server up front, which is normally the case, like Apache or, or Nginx or something like that, and your application is, uh, is used from a client side with a different domain name, then JuxRS will take care of that and construct the URIs as you want them to be with the real client information from the current cli client request. And this happens all automatically. You don't have to, I never specified Sebastian Daschner there in the project. It's taken fully from the client, which is a very cool uh, thing, by the way. And now you can see um, if you want to have some crazy com complex content type, you could do whatever you like there because you have the full control using JSONP to create whatever content type you may like. Some one of this list maybe, or you uh, invent your own hypermedia enabled content type. And now with the JSONP approach, you could do whatever you like using, and that is the point, without any external dependencies. This is still just plain Java E7. You don't need any complex mapping framework or Jackson or something else, or, or Siren, there is a Siren 4J implementation, but I also don't use this because you get rid of all the external dependencies, which is a good thing. You don't need them, and you only need one class. For example, in your real-world project, this might be uh, like a CDI managed bean. And I can show you an example on GitHub. Um, my GitHub repository um, as Dashna Juxores Hypermedia, which shows a similar example, also the books there, using somewhat more complex Examples, you have books here with books uh, resources. You can have a shopping cart. You can actually add something to the shopping cart. And as you see, this uses um, the Siren content type and is it has a lot of nested JSON data. And this is all done using one component, um, a CDI managed bean with custom logic producing JSONP objects, which is very easy to use in your appli application and you don't need any external dependencies. This is still a uh, plain Java E7. So I have several approaches there, one with the Siren 4 j implementation and one just with uh, the plain Java E um, example. And I can show you this example. There's one managed bean called Entity Builder. And as you saw, just like I did, it creates some links programmatically using this JSON properties, what you want them to look like. So do you have any questions left on anything in my presentation? Meaning hypermedia in general or JuxRS in specific, in particular? I'm also a JuxRS expert group member, so if you have any JuxRS questions, 
I will happy to help you. Nobody wants a sticker? Okay, <laughs> so if you don't have any questions left, then thank you very much for your attention.